Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode 6 of Sandwalls, the Armored Heart. So, we're going to see what kind of artifact will be made by Godin. I have assigned a couple of new areas to sleep at, as you see here. Yeah, well, maybe we do something else with that area here. Down here, I left everything as it was. And downstairs here in the new forge area, I decided that a couple of extra sleeping rooms won't hurt us either because there's really just a lot of things that we need to get done at the same time our weapons are being made our armors are being made so it's a darn good time to be a dwarf in sand walls as we are now going to continue today with the uh... whoa sorry that interrupts me a gemstone a raw gemstone weapon rack that's sick. I like that. So, um, yeah, where I was getting towards to uh, the moment before, magnetite, we get iron. So this is a real big step forward for our industry. So for today, my plans are up here first and foremostly, I decided, because I really want to um, have this guy here whole block outside here getting done as fast as possible so our fighters in the training can be happy as quick as possible so i've been following the uh, comment section with joy and there have been a couple of really really interesting ideas floating around one of the most interesting ideas was to make a better and sophisticated barracks idea some marks dwarfs as well and I figured I love the idea. Since this is a refugee fortress, basically, we will be best off to defend that thing. So, well, I got a couple of ideas for this concept. Stay tuned. That's all I want to say for now. But I love the idea. Something that I want to teaser already is that I want to do the Mark's Dwarves up here on the first level so they can do their training here. And then I can lock them inside rooms where they can shoot out of the fortifications without running into enemies and trying to bonk them with their crossbows, which is uh, really a darned stupid way to handle your crossbow. Anyways, let's see. The Mountainous Honesties should get themselves some gear. Let's see. Update equipment. That button is new and, and featured by D of Hack. And as we see there... Whose Tooth and Rimtar are getting their stuff together. Speaking about which, let's watch them a little bit while the new areas are being excavated. So, Whose Tooth Red Merchants, what a fine name. He's deliberately cruel to those unfortunate enough to be subject of his sadism. Oh boy. He's very quick to anger. He actively avoids exciting or stressful situations. He tries to keep his things orderly, and he doesn't mind wearing something special now and again. He isn't particularly curious about the world. He likes to take it easy, and he likes to brawl. Well, Stooth, I don't see you as the top-notch leader personality, but maybe you will grow into your role over the, co uh, over the course of the time. Anyways, Ustooth, welcome to the founding members. I really like the fact that he has a, a little bit of a uh, broken personality. <laughs> and Rimtar. Let's check them him out. She, oh, oh, her. She's confident under pressure. She tends to avoid any physical confrontations and she works to square this natural tendency with the respect of martial prowess. What now? Huh. She generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. She tends to avoid crowds. She's somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger. She's generally quite confident of her abilities when undertaking specific ventures, and she's not particularly interested in what others think about her. Her tongue sticks out when she's trying to remember something, and when she's thinking, her body becomes very still. Are you actually really soldier material? I'm somewhat doubting that. But what do I know? There's a honey badger fighting. The honey badger was enraged. Why? Don't know. Well, whatever. Let's see. I'm going to deconstruct the wagon now for good, as it's just lying in our way here. 
finally up here the stuff is getting done. I'd love to put down the mudstone flooring already, but I, I really don't feel like uh, that would be a wise choice, and I forgot to mark Rimtar. So, I figured that after we have found 20 people with asterisks, I'm going to stop introducing dwarves until somebody dies with those asterisks. The actions and the interests of these dwarves will have always more importance than the interests of others, as they are the protagonists of this series. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this, and feel free to leave recommendations. You are always invited to add in some input. Now, let's see how this business down here went. Not at all, to be exact. Jeez, lazy miners. I don't give them a high-priority thing to do, and you see what they do? Nothing. But, uh, well. I'm now only going to force dig a small portion of this. And leave the rest to their, uh, to them later. I think I can already tell what happens here. It is very simple and very easy. The people here do not have hauled all the things that need to be hauled. And that is, uh, driving people nuts. You must know, everything unhauled is uh, very, very naughty. We cannot have unhauled things. No, we cannot. Something between those lines. I mean, of course, you can assign people for hauling, and then that issue is not uh, an issue anymore. But, uh, yeah. So, I'll be stopping to make charcoal manually quite soonish, but for now, I... I really don't feel like uh, automating anything of that. And yeah, yeah, the watery, the watery areas here take their toll yet again. Had to be expected, nothing unexpected on that end. I was surprised that we came as far. But I like it, this gives the city more character at the end of the day. Update equipment! Jeez, not working. Too bad. Alright, we haven't had too much of the stuff here, and I bet that the magnetite smelting got paused because we ran out of fuel for a second there. So, you risked Colodom. Grandmaster Clothier. Say, so, do we have enough clothing shops? We got two weavers, and we got one clothing shop. That's certainly not enough. But, well... Overall, I feel like this area here could use some expansion. Alert! A caravan has arrived. Okay, that's the that's the good alert. So, our home is calling, and let's see. Our civilization is still at the brink of extinction, but Sandwalls is holding fast so far. Things are looking really good. The caravan incoming. And I figured that, ah, well, as soon as there is some mudstone available again, I will pick in, uh, put in a drawbridge here. Alrighty, it's trading time. So as usual, we're going to export a selected amount of gemstone here, and we're going to ask going to ask for? That's a very good question. So... Pet-wise, well... There's not really anything that I'm really missing or looking for. Yeah, well... You know what, we don't have any wishes for now. Hand hides are what they are wishing for. Let's see. So, let's trade. They're selling some charcoal and coke, although I gotta say this ain't really important for us anymore at this point. So, let's see, a bronze puzzle box? Oh, we need to create crafts soon. I just realized that this might be something that we'd be a little bit short of. So, buying some uh, animal cloth types here yet again, just to make people a little bit happier. But beyond that, 
well. Let's buy some leaves and fruits for some more exclusive tastes. And we are going to gift the homeland back a couple of gemstones as a gift. So they shall not forget that we care about their well-being and all. Yeah, yeah. So the fuel is going to be really good for us as this uh, eases up our production cycles a wee bit. And it allows me to create more gear for war. As we see here currently, more and more weapons and uh, items are being made. That's really good news. Also good news, that whole area for the people here getting ready. So I am very impressed by the speed of sand walls. This place is growing in a very, very fast pace. But I mean, due to the um, muck-up of my side where I left the population cap too high early on, I think this has brought the game to swarm me very early with uh, large immigrant waves because the pop cap was at 300. We'll see about that though. Certainly don't want to mutter about that as it is generally even more challenging to make it this way than the other way around because right now, well, the faster our population grows, the faster the game will toss dangerous things at me. So all in all, we need to get ready faster. So that's what we're going to do, but it is something that weighs us down, sort of. Okay, so let's see, we got new people in town. Let's bring the fish dissector into the military and the fishery worker, as I feel like these people have the, the least important uh, role right now in our fort. And I really want to have the mountainous honesties at least at four people's squad size, as I really feel like this will make a huge difference in our punching power. They all got swords, so they all are capable of fighting at that point. Good. So, at the Crafts Dwarfs, we're making rock pots already. So, we're gonna be needing a stockpile for finished goods. I'll be assigning that as a uh, general stockpile now. So that things that are just uh, belonging into that category, category can be stored somewhere. So with more and more people coming to Sandwalds, the expansion of our living areas becomes more and more important. I don't know what to do with this little room here yet. It looks a little bit to me like a good room for dining halls or something like that, but uh, we already got one on the same level, so... Maybe I'll, I'll keep it up for a tomb. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let's bury people there. Yeah, that's very optimistic of me, isn't it? But I know that uh, in every society, sooner or later, people will die. Even if we don't muck it up in any, uh, in, in, in any way, people will still die. It's not as if I had invented that. Okay, let's slap down extra beds so the people of Sandwalds can finally make themselves a home here. So I really want to have bedrooms ready for everybody migrating into town. As I personally feel, roleplay-wise, this is so gosh darn important, you know. It's, uh, you're not truly at home before you have a room where you can live at. So... Sadly, you can't place doors on top of these uh, building orders. That's one of the few things that bother me still a little bit, but well, what gives? I feel like we're really fast in this uh, fort. There we go. But like I said, I, I put this mostly on the many extra people that we had very, very early on. So we are going to make this area here yet another temple. I figured that currently 
religious uh, buildings are probably the most important ones and the easiest one to set up. So, what do we have still? One worshipper of Kovest Foggy Saffron, the god of fortresses and plants. What a weird combination, but I don't judge. So, let's issue a smoothing job, and we got Thrun Hound Stable, who wants to stay as an entertainer. So, the human poet Thrun Hound Stable. She has a noticeable lack of perseverance. She's trusting. She can occasionally lose focus on a matter of at hand. She is curious and eager to learn. She has a sense of duty, though she still holds the law in disdain. Yeah, you're out. You sound like a troublemaker. I'm not down. So... Did that gem cutter just kill the honey badger? So... There was a grab and a punch. So... Well... I only see messages that the honey badger is missing the gem cutter, so... I must assume that... The gem cutter did win the engagement, but let's see, Golden. So, Golden is unconscious. No health problems, but I figured that this uh, might call for a hospital. So, maybe we do build a hospital before we build a tomb. I think that sounds like a great idea, don't you agree? So... We can't make traction benches because we are lacking tables. Didn't I order tables to be made as a uh, regular thing? I could swear I did that, but no, obviously not. I did only order the tables and the thrones that we needed. Hmm. A bit untypical for me, but uh, well... Then we're going to order that, because this is uh, truly unacceptable. So rock table and rock throne. So let's stick with the limestone here. And some diorite. I need to excavate some limestone soon. So let's see where we're going to do that. Oh yeah. Definitely going to go for a bit of a mining spree here. Might be that we're uh, excavating the rest of the caverns here accidentally. But well, that'll be what it'll be. Okay, now for a hospital, we're going to require a couple of beds. Say, do we still have wood? Yes, we do. Brilliant. So we do require a couple of tables. Oh, and we need chests. So these are going to be made out of, uh, well, let's stick with the diorite here. Because these items will all be needed rather sooner than later. And while we're at it, let's just add the uh, cabinets into the equation as well. They'll be needed soon enough. So for these, yeah. Why not keep the diorite for our, as a uh, primary furniture stone? I don't mind. just need to excavate some of it. There's the Gabbro. Was the diorite early on? There's the limestone, yeah. 
there's mudstone. Yo, where's the diorite? Oh, sheesh. It's the trouble when you have that many different biomes. Let's see if it uh, came from somewhere here. Whoa! That's all the magnetite that we dug out here. Sick. I didn't expect it to be that much. So even more people are arriving. Heck, this place is attracting people. So a bowyer, a woodcutter, a surgeon, and a trader. And last but not least, a peasant. Well, yeah, I can only assume that what happened here was that the um, population count got overrided. Uh, or overwritten, over road, whatever. What I'm trying to say is that um, due to the uh, population cap being too high, people came much, much earlier. And, uh, now we got the salad, as we would say in Germany. <laughs> Jokes aside, it is what it is. So, let's see. I bet that we are lacking metal still, so... It's now about time to set up more automatics. So, charcoal. We're going to make that once refined coal drops below 20. So, in time. And as long logs are greater than 10. And magnetite. Will be made as long as we have less than 100 iron bars. And there's going to be some refined coal left. Okay. That should sooner or later get the get the industries into motion. Okay. I'd say it's engraving time. I got a uh, engraver lady and I want to get her busy. So let's see. Engraving is being done by Libash. So we're going to... Ah, oh, she's already on it. Brilliant. Let's check out her art. Oh, she's slow. She's so slow. But she's only an adequate engraver. So that'll take a time. So she made a god of the deity of Earth. A picture of the deity of Earth. Not bad. Up here... Well, the death cube is uh, slowly, slowly being completed. So, let's see. I mean, that update equipment uh, thing is quite interesting. So, yeah. Try to resolve conflicts. Yeah, now that's interesting. Will this be the first fort where I don't have a naked dwarf soldier veterans one day by the might of uh, of DF hack? Yeah, that's what it's boiling down to. I love it. So these days we are not making as many blocks anymore since my stone workers have started to make other furniture items now that are also in need in the city, which is totally fine on my book. So... The only thing that I really want to get done here would be a rock coffer, but well, not coming together. So a human mace man is visiting us. So it seems the humans are really down with helping us here. So oh, a picture of our artifact. So. The image of our civilization are oysters. The banner of shadows image is oysters. Heck. That was one point where I had no influence and no saying. I don't know who thought that this would be a impressive and uh, scary and, and, and badass icon, but uh, I'd like to disagree. Matter of Shadow Oyster. 
these guys. Okay, well, what we're also going to need now is a well, as we now obviously have a need for drinking water. So let's get that done. Probably not in today's episode, but uh, it's definitely going to be the next uh, bigger chapter now. So since our hospital is going to be here, we're going to make the well be here. And the basic idea will be now, we go downstairs here. And as far as I can see, this is already aquiferous. Mm, maybe not the best spot to try out the trick that I'm up to. So we're rather going down here. Let's go upstairs. Yeah, that's it. And we're going to need mechanisms and grates. So when it comes down to mechanisms, let's see what magma safe stone we got available. I think quartzite was one of the stones that I spotted that is available. Gabbro would be always an option. Yeah, let's use Gabbro. As Gabbro is not a nice looking stone uh, in comparison to quartzite. Quartzite has a really nice uh, color like that. But uh, yeah, when it comes down to mechanisms, the easiest way to make sure that your mechanisms are not going to be burned away by magma is to just have all your mechanisms magma safe. And that's the trick. Smart in it. So let's do the shaft for the well. And let's see how this will play out. It's always a little bit wonky at the beginning. So, the new arrivals surely brought fresh animals, didn't they? Yep. Just like I thought. Lots of animals. Alright, time to start the auto butcher. So, that is really one heck of a real cool thing. So, you just uh, activate it and it'll keep the populations on on these numbers. That's really good. Because otherwise I, I've been often so swarmed by by the critters. <laughs> yeah, look at our wine cellar grow. Sheesh. That is a lot of storage room. Okay, as you can see here, slowly the gear is uh, being made. And we might be needing more logs, but no. Charcoal is being made, magnetite is being made, and slowly the forges are, are now doing their thing. Brilliant. Just like I wanted it to be. The new bedrooms are working out as well. And Libosh is honing her engraving skills. The box outside here ain't done yet either. Well, we gonna be getting there. But so far, Sandwald's doing really well. Out there we got camels. Now that's interesting. So, did that... Why is that not being done? Ah, finally. And that was really bothering me a lot. So, as we can see here, we're not striking any water. So that one time when you want water, you don't get it, but that's okay. It's, uh, as a matter of fact, pretty much what I wanted. So the idea is pretty simple. We're going to dig until we hit the aquifer, and then we dig out, or we dig into lots and lots of aquifer, and then we let it uh, seep here into a pit that we're uh, preparing up here. It's 
probably we should do this a little bit like that. And now we need to tunnel. Well, maybe that won't be too smart. So, Gorax Cobalt Lashes wants to soldier. Yeah, okay. That is where our dwarves are struck on a weak spot because that is just uh, for them. If they want to fight with us, they're welcome. Okay, so we're going to excavate a nice little well pit here. And there's the water, okay. Let's see, we're going to go downstairs just like that. And let's see how that'll play out. I'm not quite 100% sure, but I'll try. So, my good friends, there ends today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. I really, really do like where things are getting to now. We do get a lot of equipment in. Look at that. So, our, our soldiers are ready to defend this place. And we are starting to get a well together soon enough, I bet. We just need to find a way to let water flow into this uh, little business here. And then everything else will just uh, come together in no time. All right, what's left to say is a big thank you if you've been watching this up until the very end. I appreciate. And feel free to leave me your comments. You guys have been really, really helpful with your ideas. Feel free to drop me a thumbs up on that video to show the algorithm that you liked it. It's always a nice way. And last but not least, check out the description box. It's filled with lots of good things. There's uh, my Discord server where you can hang out with like-minded gamers. There is Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me A Coffee if you'd like to support the channel. There is also channel membership, which allows you to preview all the um, scheduled episodes of Dwarf Fortress. And yeah, I'd be really happy if, if you gave any of those a look. And yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for being around. Big thanks to everybody supporting the channel. Big thanks to you still hanging out here. And hope to meet you again on the next one. Bye-bye.